Sometimes you just gotta fucking jump. GG. GG. You okay, babes? Why are you limping? You okay? Oh, sh there. Okay. We're live. What's up, everybody? What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? Let me pop this chat open. Uh, and you know, I need to. I'm just. This is just going to be a new habit. Five minutes before, need confirmation in the chat that the audio was good. So let me know in the chat if you can hear me. Uh, Cause that would be awesome. We getting we getting sound. Frankie D says we're getting sound this week. Listen, motherfuckers, don't get used to it. But yeah, you get it this time. Maybe next time. Maybe you will. Maybe you won't. That's what keeps this so fun, is because you never know what you're gonna get. All right, good. Everybody hears me. We're sounding good. Um, so I don't fucking know, man. Shit. I'm so unprepared. I have been out, you guys, just so y'all know, man. I've been out of... I just, like, haven't been feeling the YouTube bug this last week. I woke up on Monday, and I was like, you know what? I'm not going to film shit. I mean, I, it's out of habit. I film stuff. I just didn't feel like editing. So, I don't know. I'm just kind of out. I'm, like, out of the, the mood at the moment. But I'm going to get back into it. Is it officially time yet? We got one minute till it's officially go time. To everybody that's hanging with me, man, that's so cool. I saw in the chat that we got people all the way from West Africa. So who, who, anyone from across any of the ponds, you know, thank you so much for you joining in. I don't know what the, what time it is over there. I'm sure it's either really late or really early. So it's awesome that you're here hanging with us. Um, and you'll find in the chat that there's a lot of really friendly slightly sarcastic people in there that are more than happy to shoot the shit with you so thank you so much for hanging uh who else we got man you can hear yeah y'all man we have some <laughs> mud truck and sound yes we do you know it, it seems like every time everything fell apart last time because i switched locations and also i didn't do a pre-check you have to do a pre-check you live and you learn. When it comes to audio and going live, you got to do a pre-check. Yeah. All right, guys. Here we go. So we're going to talk about the press. We're going to get into all that. Actually, you guys got to remind me because I kind of forgot. I shot a video this week about announcing the winner and all this and that, but I just haven't, uh, you know, edited it. You know, I just didn't edit it. So that's that. Anyway, okay, let me let me get, uh, let me get into my... Uh, goddamn gear okay first off we're gonna go ahead and record start recording the audio for the podcast on itunes and google play and we are recording now there that is so the audio is live let me get over here into this thing and i'm gonna bring my my fugly mug into the shot so that we can get this thing started in three two one actually we're a minute past what's going on print fam it's your boy cam welcome back to the print life live video podcast today's show is brought to you by none other again again none other than cci y'all know them some of you love them and i'm here to make sure that more of you start loving them cci is an amazing company they got they got ink systems, they got chemicals, they got your emulsions, they got your cleaners, they got the whole shebang. And on top of all that, you can even get some equipment. They got washout booths, got one, love it. They got uh, drain filters, got one, love it. You know, they got everything you need, except for actual equipment or presses, which is weird. They should start making presses. Anyway, um, but today I'm talking about, I've talked about it a few times, the CCI T-Charge ink system. And why do I keep talking about this one? Because it solves a super irritating problem that all of us as screen printers have. And that is a fucking ink rack full of different ink systems, different ink colors, blah, 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 blah. With the T-Charge system, you got discharge inks, you got good old-fashioned water-based inks for those light-colored garments uh, and then well that's, pre that's, that's pretty much it it's two-in-one so you got less systems to deal with uh, they're all acrylic based so it's environmentally friendly and you know they just they've been treating me well they've been treating you guys well so let's uh, you know keep using them because they're awesome like that I got some more shit I gotta read hang on 
Um, yeah, and I already said that, right? You got the best of both worlds. Um, and I already said that they already got a bunch of shit. So, so check this out. You guys know the, the spiel, man. CCI is awesome. You know that. We all know that. I've shared it with you before, but I'm going to share it with you again. I talked to them. I We've had some issues because apparently the thing kept expiring and blah, blah, blah. But as far as I know, this discount code is now good to go. It will work. Okay. So to get 20% off of your next order on the CCI website, 20%. This ain't 10. This ain't 5% discount. This is a goddamn 20% off. Good luck getting any of your suppliers to give you that big of a discount. But use the code the print life 20. Now they gave it to me with a capital T, a capital P, and a capital L. I don't know if that's the case. I'll put it in the description of this video. It may be all lowercase, it may be uppercase, I don't know. But it's the print life 20. Use it at checkout, get 20% off. Um anything else I need to talk about? No, that's pretty much it. So let's go ahead and roll the mucking intro. Oh, that's it. Oh, hell yeah. Get jacked to the chest. Oh, thank you, Print Fam, for being here. Thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedules to hang out with little old me and the rest of the people in the fam, you know, shooting the shit in the chat, uh, sometimes not listening to what I'm saying and just interacting with each other. It's all good. Thank you for being here. Thank you for hanging out with all of us as a whole. We welcome you, and if you're in, if you've been here the whole time, thank you for coming back. Thank you for supporting this silly project that I've been doing for the better part of two years. It's it's awesome, you know. I have my good weeks, I have my bad weeks, but overall, I just love the fact that I can come and interact with you guys to some degree. So thank you for being here. In today's show, I'm going to be talking about the transition or when it's time to transition from you know, having a job and working a day job and then printing at night or printing in the evenings to going full time with it. I'm going to give you my opinion on the subject, whether that's the right way to do it or the wrong way to do it. I don't know. Maybe, you know, I don't know, but I'm going to give you my opinion on the subject and we're going to, I'm going to do my best to talk about it in as great a detail as possible. Uh, we're also going to do some independent shop news from the Print Life Facebook group. You guys are all familiar with this. I'm reading my list because I've forgotten the flow of all this. And then, of course, we conduct our live Q&A. So if you have a question, start calling them in now. I've more or less decided that um, I'll do – I'm going to answer two questions in the chat. I'm going to answer uh, – uh, uh, that's pretty much it. I'm going to answer two questions in the chat. And the rest of the questions are going to have to come in the form of you calling them in. If no one calls them in, this show goes from an hour long to 20, 30 minutes. And ultimately, I guess overall, I'm, I'm cool with that. But uh, if, if there were 20 calls, I'll, I'll answer every goddamn one of them. So if you got questions, call them in 800-806-3518. As soon as it picks up, hit extension 5 and you'll be, you know, you'll get instructions on how to record and upload your message to my server so we can listen to it so start calling them questions in now god damn it pick up them phones don't be lazy okay before we get into our you know shop news and all that stuff i gotta give my shout outs to last week's super chat this is not last week's super chat because as you guys know i wasn't here last week i was in uh san francisco screen printing live and it went well but i didn't have a way to go live so you guys missed me did you miss me i bet you did i missed you guys it felt you know what when i am not able to go live it feels like shit and jesse did not close the garage door okay i'm gonna have uh, i'm gonna keep going man but i someone's gonna walk in motherfucker anyway uh last week's super sh she well, that came out smoothly last week's super chat shout outs go to the following first the man the myth the legend it's daniel j cromer cromer daniel j cromer thank you so much for showing support to me you know i appreciate it man uh, also, anyone that does Super Chats, make sure that you ask a question in that Super Chat because you can easily attach your question, and of course, I'm going to see that first. You know what I'm saying? So, if you, you know, if you do the Super Chat, you might as well 
throw a question on it. Attach a question to it. Uh, also to Jamie Lineback, I know every time I say your last name, Jamie, I know you're, you're a consistent, regular member of the Print Fam. I am not confident with pronouncing your last name, but I'm going to just run with Lineback. So Jamie Lineback, thank you so much for the super chat. And Sam A.M. Sam Am. These are all YouTube usernames, so you guys make sure to go follow them if they have channels or whatever. Uh, or look for them in the chat, and they'll direct you to their other social media outlets. But to all of you, thank you so, so much. Is it so much or is it so much? I'm pretty sure it's so much. Thank you so much for throwing a few ducats my way to, you know, just showing me that you care. I appreciate it. Anyway, let's... Yeah. Let's get into the independent shop news. What do you say? How are we going? Are we still doing good? And I just ran through the chat and you know, you guys, Barry just said he's been here for a while, but it's the first time saying something. So let's everybody say hi to Barry J. Give him a, give him a warm welcome. You know, let him know that he is welcome. And Barry, thank you so much for hanging here, man. Uh, we're going to go ahead, go on ahead and get into the uh, Facebook independent shop news. And for this, well, I have to put my goddamn super Clark Kent looking ass dorky shit ass glasses on because otherwise I can't read the stuff. All right, here we go. Hey man, what was I thinking with this with the with the size that I I rechanged the size of the thing? What was I thinking? Because I can't read it. Uh, hang on, right quick. Oh, that's not it. Yeah, that's not it. There it is. Let me re... I gotta resize this, guys, because this is bullshit. And if you're just listening to the audio, basically what I've done is made... Uh, oh, shit, I'm stretching this out. God damn it. Keep aspect ratio, dude. I've uh, made my little window the wrong size, and it's blocking... This, so, in, in, my, in the Facebook thing, there's this window that shows my goofy ass reading the, the, the shop news. And I resized it recently, and I made it just a little too big. So I'm just moving it kind of out the way. There we go. Now we good. Okay. Let's do the shop news. And our first post is from my man Vincent De La Cruz. And he posted this just three minutes ago. So just so you guys are aware, if you really want to get your shop news noticed, I would say hold out until Wednesday, day of. You don't have to. I'll, I'll get to it. But I do it from most recent to oldest. So, you know, Vincent is getting it first. And he says, what's up, Print fam? has got some shop news. He just finished his first official order. Eh, it's a round of applause. Golf clap. Golf clap. Can't do it for shit. If you know what movie the golf clap is from, let me know in the chat. Get a thumbs up to you if you know. First official order was done. 30 shirts with a simple name and logo on the front. But... Uh, he, oh, he also had to do some personalized names on the back. I'm sure that got you a little bit more money. Um, 16 on the adults, 12 on the youth. No extra fees. Well, good job and congratulations on your first official job, Vincent. I'm happy for you, bro. That's awesome. Look at me lean, leaning back all lazy. I'm like seconds away from throwing my knees up. Thank you for sharing, Vincent, and keep the shop news coming, man. We all love to hear it. Jason uh, Rabort finally got their 6x6 press tuned and it prints awesome now here's a picture of it I'm not sure what brand this is that actually looks pretty good looks like it's got micros it's got I'm sorry Gigi my my little pup she's something's wrong with her hip she's been limping around so like I see her walking and it's super distracting everybody uh, make some prayers for the Gigi that it goes away I don't want to have to do give her surgery or whatever god stressing me out uh, but congratulations on the new press, man. I don't know what brand that is, but it, it looks nice. It looks like it's got everything you need. Hopefully, you know, it gives you all the tools necessary to do a bunch of work and make a bunch of money. David Carpenter. It's not shop news. It's not shop news. Questions? Okay, this is from Pat Cooley. Just got a new S Green filtration system from Ryanette. And as with all purchases from Ryanette, <laughs> oh, he is disappointed. Pat is disappointed with his Ryanette purchase. Uh, they change things in the design of the unit and don't update their photos online. 
Let me see what else you got to say here. I don't know if I, if I want to keep doing this. Uh, such as the filter housing, which was clear to be able to see the condition of your filters, has been changed to solid blue plastic. Can't see the filters with removing them. That's a small complaint, though. You can When you buy your next filter, you can, I'm sure you can get one with clear housing. So... That's not, I mean, it's, I understand your complaints, but it's not really that, you know, that's an easy fix for you. Um, uh, and also, I guess just tons of weld marks that are not shown on the images and it's filled with scratches. Uh, and he's worried about the weld marks because that is where it would rust. I'm assuming it's made out of galvanized steel, so the rust probably won't be that bad. Uh, and then also, apparently they forgot to send a filter along with the unit. This is going to be his last purchase from Ryanet, as well as a warning to others. I'm really not trying to be difficult, cuss, but a fair judge. You know what, man? Those are very small. Comp Look, I'm neither a fan or a hater of Ryanet. I wish I had as much money as they do and all this and that. But I think... I think it'll get the job done for you. And from what I know with this particular filter, much like CCI's under under drain filter, it's a it's an affordable option. So I guess we got to manage our expectations. But I do understand, man. I get pissed off with everything I buy because I suffer from extreme. Uh, I I mean, my buyer's remorse is uh, out of this atmosphere, man. I I have buyer's remorse when I buy dinner. So I get how you probably feel upset about it, but. This thing is a good value. I don't know, man. I'm not going to harp on it anymore. I'm sorry you, you feel gypped on it, but you had to have one, and ultimately it will get the job done. Uh, you know what I'm saying? But also, I am not an advocate of that brand because, you know, I would be if they you know, threw some checks my way, but until then. Anyway, let's move on, huh? Let's not keep harping on this sponsorship thing. God, I want to be sponsored so bad, but let's not harp on it. Shop news from Andy Desharni is uh, first live event is on the books. Definitely need to fix some hiccups, but overall it was a great weekend. Fun fact: last night was the first time I've ever printed with a headlamp for a light. So cool, man! Congratulations on doing your live event. I hope it went well. I hope you sold a lot of shirts and made a lot of money. Uh, here we go from. Um, Pinku, mm, don't know what this is. I don't know how to say your name, dude. I'm sorry. Pink, Pinku, just a secondary method for printing mistakes for new screen printers during a bold type artwork printing. What the fuck? So he's basically just saying, so this isn't news. This is more like a, a tutorial, but they use a, a heat press to smooth the plastisol. It's a viable option. It's more time consuming, but uh, cover the printed area with matte paper, blah, blah, blah. Heat press for 20 seconds. Removes the rust fill of the printed ink. Yes, it does. But also, so does the smoothing print with the squeegee and, you know, directly out of the flash to each their own. We used to heat press a lot of stuff. It's just, you know, it's like a whole other step. Looking for some more news here. This is from August 16th uh, from Richard Sesa. Nothing huge, however, he's doing a job for a repeat client, and they actually it, or they, they actually gave him the biggest job, jobs, what? Oh, I'm sorry, they gave him, can't read? Mm, did I make it out of the fourth grade? I mean, I did, but it doesn't seem like it. So what is, they actually gave him one of his biggest jobs, Two years about that allowed me to buy my conveyor dryer and now place four orders. Uh, oh, and now they play. Okay, so they gave them two years ago, and now they place about four orders a year. They're a great company, and uh, I'm glad that it's that they're working well for you, dude. Stick with them. Make sure you prioritize them, and they'll keep coming back, and you're gonna, you know, keep doing well. You just you get 100 more clients like that, and you'll be in good shape. What else we got here? We got a got some stuff from Sean Brown. Okay, what's up, Sean? This is your boy over at Hotbox. You know what? By the way, I was gonna do this on a thing, but because I didn't vlog all week, give me one sec. I'll be right back. Normally, I would do some shit like this on the vlog, but let me read his news, and then we're going to dive in even, even further. So, Sean just launched his new website as of last night. Well, that was on August 15th, so it's been up for a while. Uh, he has an online store at, 
added within the month. If you experience anything weird or find something broken, let him know. Still fine-tuning a few things. Thanks for stopping by. Sean, I hope that you built it on WordPress, but I have, I'm have i looking at it, and it really does look like a Squarespace site to me. Hope you went with WordPress, my friend, because otherwise, how are you going to use a system? Anyway, so... Mr. Sean also sent me some some killer swag. I did not open this yet. I saw it and this is impressive to me Get a load of that. I mean he's got printed bags. I mean, I don't I don't Can't complain about that, right? So thank you for sending this to me, dude I'm opening it up for the first time. I actually feel like I don't want to rip the bag brother Cuz so so nice. Okay, so there's some other stuff in here Dude, you better gave me stickers, bro. I'm gonna be so pissed if I didn't get stickers. Oh my god, I mean, this motherfucker ain't playing around, dude. Okay. It puts, it puts the boxy t-shirt on its skin, or it gets the hose. This is cool. That's for, uh, This is also cool. He's giving swag. It's signed. This is amazing. Uh, dude, I gotta tell you, your pack that you got going on is awesome. I don't know. And then there's also what appears to be a DVD. Oh, no, this isn't a DVD. There it is. It is what it is what it is. We got a magnet, hot box magnet. We got the sticks. We got the slappers, brother. Thank you for the hookup on all that. Got some good stuff here. Hot box print studio in the hizzy. And last but not least, we got our tea. So let's see what tea he sent me. Stranger. I'm a stranger to you? Don't know me? Thanks for the tea, bro. And is this printed in Discharge? Or is this water-based? That's Is that water-based? It's Discharge. It's... Hey, man. What ink is this? Because it looks like a Discharge, but it doesn't smell like the Discharge I'm used to. <laughs> That's nice. Anyway, brother, thank you for the shirt. Thank you for the stickers. Uh, if you guys want to get your shit featured on the live show... Send your swag in and I'll, you know, I'll unbox it on the thing. Oh, there's more stuff in here. We got a pen. We got a pen. This is going right here. Right here. It's going to go right here. Thanks, brother. That's awesome. I appreciate it. Okay. Moving on. More shop news. More shop news. Who else we got? Clint Worcester. Got my new press and dryer set up in my unit. Got my first four orders of 50 search eats all printed delish 50 search sheets can't You know 50 uh, all printed and delivered before the due dates and he has a few more orders already in the queue Thanks for all the help and info from everyone in the print fam or in the print life Facebook group Well Clint, you know, I can't take credit for that But uh, I'm sure that everybody else in the group says you're welcome for um, you know helping you out man And I'm really glad that you're Getting all your gear going, man. It's, it's excited. I'm ex it's exciting. I don't know. Whatever. Uh, I think. Okay, we got one more here. I don't know. This is from Shane Rude. Finally fed up with the janky timer on our workhorse illumination this week this week they repurposed an old microwave control panel i looked into that on youtube that's almost the route i went should have went that way instead of spending a hundred and something bucks on my timer still haven't installed it uh and put a vac and he put the vacuum and everything on a separate switch finally actual number buttons rather than the up down buttons not to mention how the first place the old janky timer LED had burnt out years ago. No more guessing. Well, good job, dude. I, I'm so not an electrician. I hope that I can figure out how to wire this thing up. Shop news. Shop news from Chris Wilson. They finally got a dryer. Congratulations. Uh, this is shop news from Jamie. Uh, they had a super successful day at the local street fair. That was on the 12th. I don't know if I went over that last the last time, but uh, she definitely found her people. Uh, so it just I guess she's learning just how important it is to find the target market and get in front of them Which I totally agree. Ah, uh, I figured that out some time ago, but that market has since changed So now I've got to find a new market Made a bunch of cash made a bunch of connections Yippity fucking do da. Congratulations, Jamie. I'm glad that you made some dough out there at that fear That's amazing at that fair not that fear at the fair Um, I, This about this is gonna be the last one man so this is from Steven Gynus Pacheco. Shh, 
new shop is under works. Knock down a lot of walls, combined three units to have one big gigantic room for large format printing, room for DTG embroidery, and then another for silk screening. God damn, nice, bro. Work ourselves between pushing out orders. Damn, you went all out, huh? Got the big dog suite. So, and that's going to be the end of the shop news for today, I would say. Thank you, everybody, who took... Uh, you know, a little bit of time to go into the Print Life Facebook group and actually, and actually, you know what I'm gonna do? This is this is happening. And actually, sat down and wrote some shop news to share with not only the rest of the print fam, but with me. It's nice to know what you guys are up to. You know, I don't spend as much time as I probably should in the Print Life Facebook group. I kind of go through phases. Where I'll go in and da 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 da, -da and then I stop. Uh, and actually. I know that I said I was going to kind of maybe announce who the winner was of that thing, but no, I'm going to, once I'm done with live today, I have a video that I shot uh, announcing it. I'm going to go ahead and edit that and I will upload that tomorrow. It'll be within another little vlog thing. So you guys tune in tomorrow. You already know who it is if you're part of the print fam group. It, it the motherfucker won by a landslide. I also pitched, uh, pitched a bunch of like, you know, some of the people off, but what can you do? I didn't define the rules, which means mm, the rules are whatever I want them to be, right? Uh, now, before we get into the uh, the topic of the day, I want to do my social media reminders, everybody. So hopefully, the majority of you have been here many, many times before. If you're new, however, I do need you to throw me a follow on Instagram and Twitter at Cam Irvin. That is C-A-M-E-A-R-V-E-N. Again, that's on Instagram and Twitter at C-A-M-E-A-R-V-E-N. If you haven't already, let's get that done right now. Actually, I'll give you a second. That's, that's as many seconds as you get. Make sure you're subscribed to the Print Life Podcast on iTunes, Google Play. I'm actually going to be switching to a different platform soon. It'll still be available, but I'm going to be switching over some stuff just to make that a little bit more better. But give me a five-star review and say something nice in the review. Uh, of course, if you're watching this on YouTube, I assume you're subscribed. Uh, also, just make sure that you're watching all my uploads. Make sure you're, you're pounding that thumbs up. Make sure you've dinged the bell so that you get notifications when I upload new things. And you also need to turn on the notifications to make sure that you are notified when I make a new video. And if you're interested in being on this show, you know, I've been getting a lot of DMs from people, but I... Like, it's cool to have anybody on, but also I would rather have some real, some experts that have specific fields of expertise. So if you're, if you only print with water-based or if you're, you got to have an angle. You know what I'm saying? So have an angle. Don't just hit me like, yo, I would like to be on the show. Hit me with an idea. Hit me with a, a topic that we could discuss or a topic that you are personally well versed in. Doesn't have to be screen printing. Could be a business topic. Could be accounting. Could be uh, business marketing. But hit me with something, man. Don't just say, hey, yeah, I think we do a good show. That's not that's, that's, that's not a good place to start. But if you are interested, direct message me on Instagram, at Cam Irvin. All right. So it's time for the business topic of the day. And I was going to do this the other week, but we were having so many technical difficulties that I was just like, well, let's save this for another one because I do feel like it's an important thing to discuss. Uh, and also, hang on. Oh, it's so good. Oh, man, so good. Um, it's important, I think, that I share my story, but also that, like, even I made some mistakes during the transitionary phase between working full-time and then going into this full-time. And I feel like I want to bring all those things up if I can remember all of them so that uh, I give warning and also just give perspective on the whole idea. So b before we get into it, I'm going to go into my story and uh, how I transitioned from working full time and doing the screen printing shop part time into doing the screen printing shop full time. And then after that, I'm going to go into some of the things that I wish I had done differently and shit like that. So I, you guys probably know the story is how I became a screen printer. I was trying to start a clothing brand like many of you, uh, but actually I started screen printing to make posters because although I wanted to start a brand, I wanted to start marketing, marketing it before I ever made any product. So I got into screen printing to start make, to make posters. Okay. 
as times progressed, I started making that, and I was doing wheat paste and all this kind of shit, and then I started making stickers, and I started making clothing. But ultimately, that shit was so slow to grow, and I had put so much time and effort into screen printing that it just, like, the more I did it and the more I got into it, the more I was like, you know what? I just need to do this for a business, which is why I tell most people that are saying, hey, should I screen print for my clothing brand? I say no, because... The time and effort it takes that you have to put into something to produce a good product. By the time you, you've got it all together, you might as well just be in business for yourself. So that's why I advise against it if all you want is a clothing brand. But anyway, I completely digressed from the topic. I wanted to, at some point during all that, I was like, all right, well, fuck the clothing line thing. Let's make Monument Limited a screen print shop. Uh, and during that time, I was working as a designer for another screen printing shop. So I was kind of already in the industry, but I wasn't a screen printer. I was screen printing at home as a hobby, and then I was going to work as a designer at the screen printing shop. And then I also was taking advantage of learning from a, a very good printer that they had there. So I was getting, I was absorbing shit. I didn't just go, oh, I'm going to be a screen printer professionally. I was in the industry. I was working at it. Uh, and that's step number one. I think no matter where you're at, even if you're already screen printing as a hobbyist in your, in your thing, it wouldn't hurt to go to a, a, especially a better shop and really see how things are done. It never hurts to be an apprentice, even if it's a low wage. If you're older with a family, then it's a whole other story. But So I don't regret doing that part of it. And also when I was there, I saw, oh, they do it this way, but I think I could do this better. I think I could uh, capitalize on this better. You know differently than they are and I think I can make a go of it so I set my sight on becoming a screen printer professionally problem was I was making I think 10 bucks an hour maybe 11 as a designer there I was paying rent all these kind of things so I didn't have a lot of money to go around and my options were gonna be one of two things take out a loan which I knew I didn't want to do and also I couldn't because I had dog shit credit um, or I needed to start working a second job well I had been a plumber before I got a job at the thing, at the, um, the fucking print shop. I was a plumber and I'd worked there and I was making a, like 10 bucks an hour or something like that. But what I did was I was, I had such crazy work ethic. I was such a hard worker and a hustler that, that one of the people that worked at the company where I was working for remembered me. And when they went to a new company an opportunity came up, they needed to find people to do plumbing at this thing in El Paso, Texas, El Paso, Texas. I basically had to uproot my life and go do this thing. And I had told myself when I finally got out of plumbing that I was never going to leave the print or the graphics industry again. I was, I was, that's what I was going to do. God damn. Am I ever going to get to the fucking point? Um, but he was offering more money. And in my mind, I said, okay, look, you can stick to your guns and stay in the graphics industry, or you can leave the graphic industry for a spell, make this money, squirrel it away, and then just, you know, go into business for yourself. So they came at me and he was offering me uh, 17 or 18 bucks an hour to uproot uh, my shit. And I was going to go work in El Paso, Texas. And I thought about it for a few days, finally did it. When I was working there, this is where I took the opportunity to go, okay, I'm going to squirrel away all my cash. So I did. I worked out of town. I spent nothing, man. I ate cheaply. I didn't buy clothes. I didn't buy anything. I didn't buy toys, TVs. Actually, I did buy, I bought a uh, TV uh, for the apartment that I had. But I paid the rent on the apartment that I had in Phoenix, and I squirreled the rest of the cash away. My, my, I was working there for literally two years. And during that time, my apartment lease ran out. And instead of getting a new apartment, I leased a, I, I found a landlord that would lease me a warehouse space. It was like one of those strip mall warehouses for 11, it was like 1100 square feet. It was like 700 bucks a month. Uh, and instead of getting a place to live, cause I was working out of state, I basically, that was what I put my rent towards. And I would rented the place and while I was working as a traveling plumber at all these different things. I would, I left El Paso, went to other States, all this kind of stuff. I was slowly purchasing equipment putting it into things, basically setting up my first shop, uh, all while working. And while I was doing that, before I had ever opened my print shop, I was building my website. So I wasn't even officially a printer yet. And I was already building a website because I knew from the bottom of my heart that I didn't want to have to go do door-to-door -door sales. And I didn't want to have to rely strictly on word of mouth because as good as that is, it's also, it's very hard to get that ball rolling. 
So before we were ever open, I was building my WordPress website. I was doing tactics on SEO. I was building pages. I was writing stuff up. I had themed it. I was learning how to build a website, all that stuff. A few years goes by. I've saved up a bunch of money. During that time, I had bought all my equipment. So I had basically retrofitted a shop. And uh, I already had a website that was live. And straight conveniently enough we had came back to work in phoenix we were doing jobs around phoenix and i had told them that i can't leave town anymore because calls were starting to come in so i was getting calls from the website literally my first call came and i had not officially opened the doors i just had a live website i took the call took the order did the work produced it handed it off and you know that's the way it went as i was doing my plumbing as a day as a daytime fucking plumber i was taking phone calls i would run off to the shitter i would duck off to the porta potty i had my my pad of paper and my pen and my shit and i would do the thing write all their information down get all this stuff uh, get them a quote as soon as i got home print the jobs that i got handle the emails all that kind of stuff in the evening so basically i was a uh, working 6 a.m till usually 3 to 4 p.m and then i would come home and the rest of my evenings were spent hauling balls to the suppliers hauling balls to the garment um, wholesalers picking all that stuff up bringing it to the shop printing it late into the goddamn night sleeping for three hours waking up and doing it again I did that uh, I would say six months straight and when I was doing it I was at first it was exciting the first three to four or five months I'm super excited about it that last month I was going ape shit I was I was irate with everyone I was no I was actually getting irate with potential screen printing customers. I was going ape shit, and uh, I finally was f ultimately felt like I was forced into it. The work kept coming, the jobs kept coming in. I was working every single night of the week, uh, so I was forced into it. And I built this up on purpose. I set it up this way with the website. I was forced to make a decision: was I going to stick with plumbing or printing? Obviously, I was waiting for the printing business to force me out of my plumbing company because that's what I wanted to do for a living. So I had set these things in motion to force myself out of my job. And, and this is what happened. After that happens, I go to work as a screen printer full time. Um, so I had left my day job and I had went into screen printing professionally. And that's how it went down for me. Now, I would say if, if you're asking yourself, when is the right time? You're, it's, it's probably not the right time. It's the right time when you have not slept more than three hours, at least six days out of the week. Maybe you take Sundays off. But even then, most of the time I had to work all through Saturday. I had to work all through Sunday just to pick up the slack and make it up so that I could start fresh again on Monday. It was, it became a nightmare. If you don't have the workload where it is a fucking nightmare for you, it's, it is not time. This is my opinion. Uh, the job will, the, you know, the print jobs will start flowing in, you know what I mean? Especially if you're low priced and all that shit. I made all those mistakes. That's a whole other topic for conversation. But if you have fairly low prices and you have a website and people are searching you and you answer your phone the first time a client calls you, one of the biggest tricks in the world of acquiring new jobs is answering your phone. I suck at that. But if you answer your call, your phone, when they call, you're going to get work. And that's what happened to me, and I got so much work that I was forced out of it. Now, to reiterate, if you're trying to decide whether or not it's time to leave your day job and start screen printing full-time, I don't personally think it's a question. I don't. I truly don't think it's a question you will know. It's not something you even have to ask advice on. If you're working, it and you're only sleeping three hours a day and you end up having to work Saturdays and Sundays, it's probably time. However, this is why I wanted to bring this topic up so like so badly. And I apologize for that super long-winded story that got me to that point. I could have just said, oh, if you're not working every day of the week and you only sleep for three hours, I could have said it that way, but hell, I wanted to tell a little story and eat up some time. This is so I, I, I've made some notes here and what I said to myself is tell my story. Okay, and then say this. This is literally a bullet point. Consider yourself as your own personal investor. 
And this is where I made the mistake. And I think that many of you are also going to make this mistake. Uh, again, this is just, whoops, that was weird. This is just my opinion. I can't say that everyone has done it this way or should do it this way, but looking back on myself, I could have treated this whole thing differently had I not been so eager to go into business for myself, which all of you are. But if I had thought of myself as my own personal investor in this business, I could have done some things slightly differently. I could have, uh, brought a screen printer in right away as opposed to being the screen printer the course screen print screen printer i could have kept my hourly job brought a screen printer in to do the actual labor and just manage the phone calls and the emails and it wouldn't have been that bad and here would have been the kicker had i kept my job i could have taken that cash that i was making that i had been saving so for since for forever and re and i could have just kept dumping it into whatever the business needed whether it was new equipment or more importantly, which is what I would have done and had I, if I still had done the same thing, I would have dumped it into marketing like crazy. I would have, I would have had an income to support a, a much larger marketing campaign. And this is where I think a lot of people, even myself, make the mistake of getting too eager to be in business for yourself. No matter what business you're in, at some point it's going to become a job. It's really exciting in the beginning. You're doing all these amazing things and you're like, oh, hell yeah, I'm doing what I always wanted to do. And look at me, look at me. I'm a business guy. I'm a business guy. But eventually it becomes a job that you wake up every morning and you do it and you do, you start to take on very repetitive tasks, whether it's emailing or just screen printing or setting up screens, you start doing these repetitive things and eventually the novelty wears off. And what you're left with is an undercapitalized business that ha does not have the cash flow to support real growth. Okay, this is what I did. This is what the majority of screen printers do. So your options from there, because you don't have cash flow to support real growth, are you raise your prices and you have to acquire a new set of clients. That's what I'm doing now. Or you take out loans or you take out equity, equity loans on your home. It's, or you take out all these different loans to support growth, to bring in new equipment, to do this and that. It's a way to do it. But if, if I had kept my job even two years longer, if I could have held out, put a printer on, did the thing, kept my job two years longer, I would have had more cash to dump and, and ultimately uh, speed up the growth of the business that I, that I really still want to be greatly successful. So the point is, you might stop, if, if it were me, looking back on it, maybe stop thinking of yourself as the only person that can work it, maybe start considering your job as a it's a bank, it's a loan. And if you keep working with that job, you could throw that money into the business. It's easy to hire a screen printer. You're gonna do it eventually. Why not do it right away? You could still get them cheap. You can usually get them cheaper to bring someone in than it would be to, to pay yourself. Because your costs are your rent, your home rent. If you have a family, then you're in a whole other world of shit. All of these other things. Whereas if it's just him, you just pay him his, his 12, 13, 14 bucks an hour and that's it. So I would strongly consider that. Um, and ultimately, that's the whole, the whole point. I wrote another thing here. Consider yourself as an investor, but to be an investor, you got to have cash. And if you're not independently wealthy from something else, how do you get cash? You work. Uh, and I'm just going to reiterate this over and over again. Going into business for yourself is cool. It's awesome. But eventually, that newness wears off, and you're left with the... A situation where you're trying to grow but because you don't have any other streams of revenue coming in you don't have the income to grow at the at the rate that you would ultimately like to and this is what I've been dealing with for the past four years had I kept that job for another two years oh my god it, this it would have been a, a totally different story I'm of, of one thing I'm certain is that it would have been a very different story here so that's that um, what else did I put here Yeah, that, that was it, man. That was the whole thing. So that was like really long-winded, especially because of my story part of it. But I think that that's the ultimate, uh, the whole point of the whole, of this whole spiel, man, is like, don't get into too much of a rush to work for yourself because especially small businesses that are undercapitalized, you become stagnant, especially if you don't have huge profit margins, you will get stuck. You, you, and then you have no options to pull yourself out other than loans whether it's from family or friends or from the bank and that's a or 
you know, leans against your house or whatever. And then that's a very dangerous place to be because, as they say, I don't know what the percentage is, but 90 percent of businesses aren't going to make it. So of all of you guys listening right now, including myself, 10 percent of us are going to exist. The rest of us in the next five years will be gone. Isn't that crazy? That sucks. That sucks. So don't let yourself be that statistic. Do not get in a rush to leave your job because you're going to need that cash, babies. You're going to need it. And I feel like that's a pretty good note to leave it on, right? Hopefully that made some sense, guys. Uh, you know, a lot of these things are just me babbling. And uh, I hope that they help, you know? It's been a long time since I went back and listened to myself on one of these things. I hope when I'm babbling here that it's actually useful information or at least a useful perspective on an idea. I, I do want to say one more thing in that I hope that you guys don't feel like I'm preaching gospel and I think that this is the only way it should be. This is just my opinion on a particular subject. There are many, many ways to skin the same goddamn cat. So take what you will from that. But that was fun, man. So now, what time is it? Yeah, it's time for the it's time for the Q and A of the day. It's time for the Wednesday Q and A. So let's start. Let's start uh, banging those motherfuckers out, man. And I'm gonna go to the chat first, and I'm gonna look for two questions. So, as I'm looking for these two questions, um, we want to make for goddamn sure. That it, I'm only going to do two questions from the chat. If you have a question and you would like to get it answered, I need you to call the 800 line right now, dial extension 5, and record your message. Because I'm only doing two questions from the chat. So here we go. Let's get into this Q&A. Start calling it in now. And I'm looking. Oh, my dude, Esteban Koo hooked me up with a $20 super chat. That's what the fuck's up, man. Did you ask me a question? No. But you're definitely generous, so thank you, Esteban. That's beautiful, brother. Thank you so much, man. And you will get your shout-out on the next live show as well, man. But that's just so amazing. Okay, moving on, man. That's amazing! And the, in transitioning, do you mean in a Caitlyn Jenner kind of way? Not don't. Is this a, a topic that's on your mind? The The... The idea of trans se se sexual transitions, yeah, it's a topic these days. Um, hey, dude, thank you too, by the way, Sean. That was awesome for all that that swag, brother. Did you answer in the thing? It's strictly WordPress guy, but okay, good. So, by the way, guys, Sean did build it on WordPress, so he's going to be able to use the shop management system. This is also in the vlog tomorrow, but I guess I might as well go ahead and let this out of the bag while you guys are calling in your questions. So I had a very long and heated discussion with the developers the other day. I knew that it was going to happen because I've learned this the hard way over years and years of dealing with different contractors and stuff. But I had I had I was being positive. So we were initially planned to launch at the end of September, but they told me we had a I was screaming and yelling at them and we were negotiating and working it out, but it's going to be an end of October. So it's going to be a month later. And I I knew this was going to happen, but I was trying to be optimistic. But they sound confident that they can have it done at the end of October. So a month later, sucks ass. I'm so pissed about it, you know, and I'm getting discount because of it. But they're going to and they're going to keep getting punished every if they're if they're a, a, a month later than that, man, they're going to get hit, too. But this is what has happened. So, you know, I'm sorry. I know you a lot of you guys need something in place. I know that. And I understand because I was in your I was in the exact same place you were two, two and a half. Is it, has it been three years now? However many years ago. So I understand. But just be patient with the process. You know what I'm saying? It's coming out. And what I can tell you guys without a shadow of a doubt is that this first stage of the release is going to just be the beginning, man. I have got these ideas on, on the kind of system I want to build that is going to make the process of owning and managing a screen printing shop like, I don't want to say easy because I don't want too many comp, too much competition entering in, but yeah, it's going to be easy. You know what I'm saying? So just bear with me, hang in there. And the first release, too, is only just a small portion of what this thing is going to be. So I know you guys are getting a little antsy, but just bear with me, man. It's coming. 
it's going to be glitchy at first. That's why we're doing the beta testing thing. But after a couple months of being in beta, it'll be a rock solid platform that's just crushing. Okay. So I'm excited about it, guys, but I'm sorry it's a month later. Um, all right. Sorry, Ryan, man. I know, dude, you're, you got other shit to do. You got family and all that shit. Um, anyway, so let's see what kind of questions we got here. Let me get up to the top. Maybe there are none, huh? And in which case, oh, okay. This, so this was a question I had asked Sean about it and I was asking what kind of ink it was. So he is utilizing it. He's using plastic charge on this. You know what I like about that? It doesn't have that strong discharge smell that pure discharge has. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of fan. I'm kind of fan. You know, I might need to look into this a little more deeply. I have a bunch of plastic charts sitting up here too, man. I just haven't been using it. Anyway, dude, thank you for the information. You guys, I'm I'm just sitting here looking at the plastic charge prints, and I got to say, you might look into that as opposed to pure discharge, mainly because of the smell. Uh, anyone, anyone, anyone? No, okay, well, this is interesting. No questions on the thing. So I'm going to go to the, uh, you know, the hotline, which I don't have loaded up. I had it loaded up earlier, and now it's not here. Good for me. Where the, where's the login, man? Bear with me, guys. I wasn't logged in, even though I should have been logged in. I'm not on the ball here. And that's what happens sometimes. All right, we logging in now. This week has been crazy for me, man. Not crazy, I've just been, it's been weird. The one thing that I can't get over is I was sitting here today working on stuff and I'm just sitting there going, I do not want to edit another video. I was just in my head, like all I could think is, I don't want to do one. I found that I do that in waves, especially when it comes to creative things you know whether it's making videos or doing artwork or designs and stuff i go in waves of creativity and i've learned to, to ride them hard <laughs> when i'm on when i'm going up it and then kind of ride them down as they're going but when i get bored of it i try not to force it just because uh otherwise i'll burn out anyway we got some questions in here first one let's go ahead and play it and see what we got hey there cam print fam what's going on this is eric in Orlando, Florida with Urban Inc. Been watching you, watching the lives, watched pretty much all your content. Cool. I think it's great and I appreciate it. It's actually helped me get through most of my days and different projects I've had to do. Um, my question is That's though, like when do you know when it's a good time to actually move out of, let's say your garage shop into an actual location? Mm. Rather be small or big, you know, mm. just making that leap. You know, maybe something you have answered already, or at some point you've answered it, and maybe I just didn't understand or just listen point blank. Okay. Um, I definitely like to know when that time frame would be, or what's your opinion on it. Um, yeah. Without you know, obviously, pooping out a lot of money to get into a location, but something small and convenient that'll help your business grow. Thanks, man. Okay. Well, thank you, uh, Jose, for calling that in. So and I'm glad that you did because that really does go hand in hand with the time to move to a full time thing. When I was doing it, I let my apartment lease run out. So I didn't I didn't have to deal with all the, the other stuff, the family stuff and all that. So for to that, I have to be sympathetic. And I also have to understand that this can't that my ideas can't apply to everyone. I'm percolating my idea as I say that. Your, the, your garage is such a great resource that the fact that you can have a, a part of your home that actually pays you as opposed to you paying for it is a beautiful thing. And so I, if it's me, man, I mean, I would hesitate. It. I would push that shit out as long as I possibly could. I mean, it's just, it's, it is so much better to have a live work uh, environment, especially just when it comes to, to making money. Cause like I was saying earlier, especially when you first start, even if you're getting all the work, you're going to be cash poor, unless you're charging what you need to be charging to be really, truly profitable. You're going to be cash poor. And you're not going to have money to dump back into the business and actually grow. So if, 
if you, if there's a way for you to stay in your garage, I would I would exhaust all options, even if it means like building a sh like getting a shed, man, to expand like storage or whatever it is you need to do, depending on where you're at. So that's that is honestly, man, like my tr my my best advice. It is time to move though when you've just, you know, it comes to a point where you, you have the workload, you got more clients than you can already handle and maybe you need to bring in a second manual printer so that you can uh, get another press going in conjunction with you or whatever. Those are usually the times when you actually need to expand. Everything else is kind of bullshit and it's kind of like a, pri the more I look at it too, it's more of a pride thing. And do not get me wrong, man. I want more space. And if the right deal came along, I'm going to take it. But it is going to be a stretch. It's not going to be this savvy business move. It's going to be more of a personal move for me to get more space. Because I like more space. I like to have other things going on. But do I need it? Maybe. Should I do it? Pro I could probably make what I got work just fine. And I would say it's the same scenario for you. But, dude, you got to go off what feels right. I don't think there's – God, I could harp on this shit forever because I have multiple feelings about it. Even as I'm saying it, I'm like, yeah, but sometimes you need a dedicated workspace. You need to be able to park your cars. The, the truth of the matter is, dude, is the money needs to – your profits, you need to add in the cost of the new place, which will be anywhere – if you find, like, one of those strip mall ones like the first one I got, it's going to be anywhere between – 500 and 1000 bucks a month. You need to be able to get that much plus the profits that you need to to whatever to dump back into all this stuff. So it's a it's a big jump, man. I would just really exhaust your current situation. That's what I would say. That's it. Yeah. I would just exhaust it. Could be wrong. I don't know if I'm right in in that in in my feelings with that. You know, I'm I'm not super savvy when it comes to business moves and like you know, all that kind of stuff. But my gut feeling tells me, dude, it's better to stay lean and mean for as long as you possibly can. There is something that I'm going to go. Okay, I'm going to go. I'm going to take another stance, though. The other side of that is just looking more professional, which I totally get. It's it's you can't bring people to your house. Okay, so I am changing my shit. There are some core things that you have to do to become what I would consider a legitimate business. Also, you can't have delivery trucks coming to your house every day, this and that kind of shit. Oh, man, I don't know. If, you can, if you're figuring out a way to work it from your home, by all means, stick with it. But I do understand that idea of just getting a little bit of a storefront, getting into a place, and doing well. But we look like we're in a fucking, just a garage somewhere as well. And clients, it's, it, it off puts some of them, but the majority of them aren't. They don't even give a shit. So, there's that. But I get it. Huh. Good enough. Right? Maybe. Probably not. But that's my answer. <laughs> Take what you want from it. Thank you for calling, though, uh, Jose. That's, that's really awesome that you took the time to call in, man. I know that's a little scary. Next question. Quick question um, regarding... Clients bringing on their own garments, uh, bringing on their own T-shirts. How do you handle those, uh, especially with maybe messing up a few garments or whatnot, pricing or whatnot? Just like a little bit of note, because I did have a situation one time messing up the garments, and I want to know how folks handle with those situations. Yeah. Well, that's the scary thing of contracting, and that's the scary, this the scary scenario in the screen printing business as a whole, right? Is that if you fuck up the shit, whether you paid for it or whether they bring it in, it's your responsibility to, to replace it and fix it. That's why screen printing is a terrifying business, and there's no going back. Uh, but a lot of other services are, especially metal workers, anything where you're destroying, like stocks, you know, whether it's shirts or metal or whatever. If someone brings them to you and you do a, and you misprint it you have to replace it or oh, if you don't dude you're off to a bad start right because you're already going to have people just slamming you i mean it's it's more or less a policy now what we do is is so there is a there's when you have that policy there is room for shitty clients to like almost exploit the loophole so what I've gotten in the strong, it's, it's actually part of my system, is before they go to pay, a terms bubble pops up. And they have to read and accept the terms to do it. And they're mainly our, our core terms, which are, you know, if we misprint 12 or less, we're not going to do a reset up. We're just going to refund it. 
Uh, we do have a 3% misprint allowance on regular, 5% on discharge and water base kind of stuff. And that allows you to mess up some of them. Uh, but the real key is the mock-up approval process. And within that, we, we tell them that they need to double check, not, not just glance over the mock-ups, but they need to double check the artwork for missing elements, misspellings, things printed backwards, because we're going to reference the mock-up for our final print proof. If they approve that mock-up, even if something is misspelled, they have approved it. So that's the whole trick is just getting approval, making them understand that they need to go over the mock-up with a fine-tooth comb before they approve it. Because if you print it and it looks like the mock-up and they approve the mock-up, you'll be safe. If you didn't really specify how important it was that they review that mock-up and they just glance over it, you know, like you're you're in that fine line where do you enforce it or is it kind of your fault for not inf not telling them how important it is for them to review it? You know what I mean? So have a very strong mock-up approval process. Read your terms in before you take any money from them. Read your delivery dates and all that stuff to them so that they're aware of all of your policies. And, and it does mitigate a large portion of that kind of stuff, man. But at which point, if your printer fucks something up, if there's a huge pinhole or he gets ink on all of them or he scorches a whole batch of them, unfortunately, that's it's on you, man. You got to fix it. That's just the reality of this game, man. That's why this game is so stressful. That's also why being a contract printer is, ex is specifically difficult because with contract printers, if they mess up a whole batch, they don't even have the profits from the markup on the original garments to like help kind of mitigate the reorder. So contract printing is a nightmare, man. That's why I'm not even, I'm not even looking to get into it. And, uh, but hopefully that answered. And then as far as, uh, what else did you say? You had something about pricing in there, I think. I think you did, but maybe not. Did you? Hey, man, let me know. You guys, hit, hit me in the chat. What was in the, in the shit with pricing? Okay, and then we did have a... We did have another question from my dude, Uproar. What's happening, bro? Uh, and he gave me the $5 super chat. Shout out to you. Thank you so much for that. You the man. What's my favorite movie? Oh, my lordy, lordy, lordy. There's a lot of them. So, for the longest time, my hands down, absolute 100% favorite movie was Fight Club as like a high school when it came out it came out like my senior year in high school i think and that that's been my favorite for the longest time but now it, it kind of bounces between fight club and there will be blood but i have found that i watch there will be blood more frequently there will be blood daniel day lewis is a killer uh before fight club it was actually ninja turtles one and i was like that was my favorite movie since since as long as i can remember since it came out Good question. Thanks for the more personal questions. That's fun sometimes. And that is it, man. That's pretty much it. Uh, yeah, so guard, now I'm reading your guys' shit. You know, it's interesting. This is one of the things that I kind of, it's cool, but it's also like, eh. Because, like, as I'm saying stuff, there can be disagreements with what I'm saying in the chat. And then I get stuck at the end reading it. And I'm like, what is going on here? And then I feel like answering it or addressing it. But nah, fuck that. Yeah, well, I, Fight Club came out, I'm pretty sure. And I could be slightly wrong, but I'm pretty goddamn sure it came out was when I was a senior in high school. I, I'm pretty fucking sure. Or did it come out on... DVD when I was yeah it was released on DVD when I was a senior in high school because I can remember specifically being at a party and it was playing on the thing and it had just gotten released so DVD still yeah same thing Here's something interesting. So Jason's band ordered shirts years ago that had a yellow thumbprint on, on the shoulders. Every single shirt. Uh, the shop said they'd replace it, but then it was out of business the next week. Oh, well. Yeah, man. Right. Well, that's the, the life of screen printing. You'll notice, man, these shops come and go. You'll see some really cool shop open up, and then they're closed, and then this and that. And it's just like a fucking nightmare, man. It's because most of the people that get into this business are just not experienced business people. 
And that's why I'm like, the more I do it, the more adamant I am with all of you guys to not be in a hurry to grow, just to stay as lean and mean as you possibly can. Yes, Jason, I graduated in 2000. So that's right. So it must have released early 2000 and by the end of the year is when it came out on DVD. Very cool. We're getting into the nitty gritty of how fucking old I am. I'm so young though. I'm 37 and I'm the, I'm so fucking young, man. I got a long time left. So don't you guys worry about me. I'm young. Wait, am I 36 or 37? Don't matter. I'm a baby. But that's it, y'all. It's a uh, 7.02 by my clock. Not as many questions. No one called it in, but that's good with me. So thank you so much, Print Fam, for hanging with me, man. This was, um, we got through it, you know? I Hopefully there was no hiccups. Hopefully the audio sounds good. Uh, and to everyone that threw mo those super chats my way, I super duper duper appreciate it. A uh, little bit of news on what's going on with the uh, with the with the vlogs and the videos and stuff like that. So I did. I took this week off. I may sh I'm gonna edit one tonight or tomorrow and upload that. Just announcing the winner of the press. I got to get that thing sent out. Uh, but as far as the rest of the videos, I, I set up the printlife.com to have some merch. Everybody was talking about it, so I'm gonna see if you guys put your money where your mouth is. I'm gonna do T-shirts. I'm gonna release them, and I'm gonna see if they actually sell. You know, I, I've, I have a feeling that based on my amount of followers and subscribers on YouTube that it's not going to be enough to be worth the effort of doing this kind of swag thing, but I'm going to do it. The way it's going to go down is I'm going to, basically my vo my vlogs are going to start centering around that. I'm going to, one day we'll be setting up the artwork and then it'll be going into production and all this and that. And then that will be the course of the vlogs from this point moving forward. And I think that's a good idea because it gets me back out on press. It forces me on press yeah right so that's going to be kind of the plan with the vlogs moving forward uh so look forward to that but i'm probably not going to start them till next week probably next monday because i got a couple batches of shirts in i got some graphics ready to go so keep an eye out for that and i'm gonna see if you guys you know everyone is telling me to do it so let's see if you all put your money where your mouth is and, and buy the swag that i release got pins on the way i gotta get some boxes and all that kind of shit going to though i really like what sean's doing with the bags bro that's pretty slick huh all right guys you know it's it was awesome hanging with you make sure to take care of yourselves print fam and we'll see you next wednesday at 6 p.m mountain standard time yes yeah, a big fat <clears throat> peace out